Good afternoon, grade 12. So, welcome to technical mathematics. Today, we are going to be discussing the application of calculus. Um, that is the topic that we are going to be looking at. And then uh, we know that uh, our learners are having a, a very challenge when it comes to application of calculus. But I hope we, whatever that we are going to be discussing today uh, is going to make sense to you. And you're going to understand and answer the questions and the application of calculus. And then uh, I also advise learners to just have a look under examination guideline uh, what things should uh, be known before you write a trial I mean, final examination and application of calculus and other topic uh, under technical mathematics. And now let's start and see what are we going to be discussing for today's lesson. Now, a content we have a topic which is differential calculus and integration. Now we'll be discussing a uh, application of differential calculus uh, as I was saying and then we then go to integration uh, but we know that uh, this one of application is a it's very challenging to our learners but let us try to understand the procedure on where do we start uh, or, or when you, if you are given your question under application what things you should know before you can uh, understand to answer questions. Now I will try to explain everything that you need to know when answering these questions of application of calculus. All right, uh, now let's start. All right, these are the steps that you should follow when you are solving the maxima and the minima problems. And then the first says you should highlight what question ask and make an expression for what has to be maximized or minimized. Uh, you can also try a diagram if possible. In some cases, uh, you'll have to try a diagram to understand what question is talking about. And the third point says we should, uh, if you are uh, if these two variables eliminate one using the given information and simultaneous equation, and then write down the f of x and uh, f prime of x when you are deriving. Uh, set the derivative equal to zero to for maximum and or minimum. Uh, if in order to maximize or the minimum an option, I mean of an uh, object, sorry. Uh, f of x and determine f prime of x, meaning if you are in need of the maximum and the minimum, then surely it's going to be f of x equals to whatever you're going to be having. Thereafter, you're going to do the derivative of this by showing this f, of f prime of x, and therefore, after deriving, you then equate it to zero to solve uh, the value of x. And it's not always the value of x, it will depend uh, on the variables that we're having in that particular question. Now let's see on how do we answer such questions. All right, uh, a solid rectangular break, which has the length of uh, 2x. You can see from here to there it's 2x. Breadth of x centimeter and the height of h centimeter. Determine the dimension of the break if its volume is given, is to be given a maximum. Uh, 
now this one, uh, that's what we are going to be starting. Let me check first. Uh, All right, I think it's going to start on this one because uh, that was the third question from this uh, uh, scenario. It says uh, solid re rectangular bricks, which has a length of two centimeter, a breadth of um, X centimeter and the height of H. If the total area, I mean surface area is 1,452 centimeter squared, show that the height, it can be written as this. Now, uh, I always advise learners or, uh, to tell that before you can answer the first question, what is important is the information that you are giving from the scenario. And now you can see from this one, we are given what? The surface area as 1,000 for, uh, 152 centimeters square. Now for you to answer this question, uh, you are going to be writing the surface area for this, then you substitute this one, then you make H the subject, always. You start with what you are giving from the scenario. Uh, let's see if that is, you can see the surface area formula for the rectangular brick. And then because we are having, already we're having surface area as 1,452, this is what the area. And then you just substitute everything that we are having. And then you can see we've got H there, also H there. But remember we should now make H the subject of the formula to show that H equals to this. And then you just multiply this going to give us four X squared plus this one is give us 4xh plus 2xh. Now because these are like terms, you are just going to add them together, it's going to give us 6xh, all right? And therefore, we are going to be transposing this, the 4x squared. And then this is what you are having now. This is what you are having. And then from there, you're going to divide with 6x. Uh, then you divide with 6x. Then from there, you're going to say 1,452 divided by 6x minus 4x squared over 6x. Then you simplify it, and it's going to give us 242 over x minus 2x over 3. So that's how you should go about it. Uh, so always remember that if the surface area is given, then you should start with the surface area before we can address uh, this question, this one that they need us to, 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 to obtain. Now, the second question, it says express the, as express the volume of the bricks in terms of what? X. You just write the formula for the volume of the rectangular. It say V equals to L times width times height. Then thereafter you just use the, but now remember is for instead of H, we are no longer putting eight, but we are putting what we have obtained from previous uh, solution, which is this. You can see instead of H, now you substitute with this 242 over X minus two X over three. Then from there you multiply, you simplify the, this what you are giving. So now we have answered the question in terms of what? In terms of X, you can see there is X, there is X. Now this is the, the volume of the bricks in terms of X. We have answered that question, okay? And then, All right, we are now having a new scenario, a cylindrical uh, 
Neptune paint has a volume of what? 340 centimeter cubic or cubic centimeter at 340 cubic centimeter and a height H centimeter and the radius uh, R. Express H in terms of R. Now, I repeat what we are hearing from this scenario. You can see we are giving what the volume. Then to answer or to address the first question, we have to write the volume first. Now we are going to be writing the volume of what? Of this cylindrical uh, tin uh, paint. And then from there, you substitute the volume. And then you they said you should express H in terms of R, meaning we're going to make H the subject of the formula here. You divide with pi R squared. Then this is what we want to be uh, heavy. So let me just answer the question. Number two, determine the surface area in terms of R. You just write the surface area of a steel, and then this is the surface area. Now you just substitute. Now instead of H, we are no longer just putting H or the height. You just going to substitute with 314 over pi R squared. This is what we are having. Thereafter, and then you just simplify it because this pi cancel this one and then R cancel another R there. You're left with only one R. Two times three is 140, then it's going to give us 680 there. And then this is what we are having. All right. And then we have answered that question. That says you should determine the surface area in terms of R. You can see there is R there, R there. And then determine the radius. We are now looking for the radius of the can that can be ensure that the, the surface area is maximum, all right? Let's check. And then this is uh, the equation from there. We are going to be deriving with respect to R. And this is what we have. Remember, if you have to de do derivative, uh, one of the rule you need to rewrite this, but now, we need to get rid of this division psi. So hence, we are having 680R to the power negative one, so that we can be able to apply the rules of differentiation. And then from there, we just derive this what we're going to have. And then from there, you equate it to zero. So this is what we're going to have. Now, because since we are in need of R, and then we are having a fraction here. So to simplify it for you, uh, you can just multiply each term with r squared. So if you multiply zero with r squared, it's going to be zero. If you multiply this fraction with r squared, it's going to give us negative six, uh, 680. Then if you multiply four pi r, it's going to give us four pi r cubed. And this is what we are having after multiplying with r squared. Now, because we are looking for r, then you're going to transpose this six, negative 680 there. This is what you're going to be behaving. Then from there, you divide both sides with 4 pi. And then this is what we're going to be having. And now to get rid of this uh, exponent 3, you, you just put a cube root both sides. And then we are left with r. You can see r equals to a 3,78 centimeter. So you have just determined the radius of the k. Okay, uh, the edge of a rectangular box are x, which you can see is the height, x, uh, 2x is the length, and uh, 180 minus 3, 3x is, is the breadth. Uh, determine the volume of the box in terms of what? Uh, x. So just write the volume, the formula for volume, then you substitute the values there. Then you multiply, then this is what we're going to be obtaining, which is 360R squared minus 6X cubed. And then the next question, uh, it says the volume, I mean the value of X for uh, which will make the volume of the box a maximum. Now let's see. For us to be able to get the value of X, we have to derive 
and equate it to zero so that we can be able to solve the value of x. Now let's see, then you're going to be uh, deriving with respect to x and then derivative, you know the rules, you just drop this two multiplied by 360 and give us 720 and then you do the same with this one, it's going to give us negative 18 and x to the power two. There after you equate it to, it to zero and then from there you are going to take your common factor as x and then you then solve for x, x equals to uh, zero and then and 720 minus 18x. So when you solve that, it's going to give us x as uh, 40, x equals to 40, all right? That is x equals to 40. And then since they are looking for the maximum, right? The maximum, now we are having two values and then we have to choose between these two values, which one uh, do we need or which one is the maximum uh, volume? Then remember, this one is a cubic function. Can you look at this one? A cubic function. And if the coefficient of uh, x to power three, x cubed is negative, then this is going to be, this is going to be the, the, the shape of that, uh, what, cubic, right? So now if we can just draw this, and then the turning point, this turning point is going to give us the maximum and then this turning point here is going to give us what? The minimum, all right? Then you can now, it's very clear, it's zero and 40. You can see which one comes first. You can see, uh, it's, I think this one is going to be the turning point. This turning point is zero, and then this turning point is 40. And then remember this one is where we are having the maximum value there. So which is 40 there. Hence, we're going to be taking this 40 uh, as the solution that we are looking for. And the last question, the dimension of the box. So since we have determined, uh, we have determined the value of X, and then now we can see the height is still x, so the height is 40. And the length is 2x, so 2 times 40 is 80. And then when you say 180 minus 3 times 40, then it will give you 60. So these are the dimensions of this uh, rectangular box. A manufacturer has designed a closed box which base side has the width uh, equal to x centimeter as indicated below. The length of the box is now determine the volume of x for which the volume of the box will be maximum. Now we have determined the the volume of what of this uh, box or rectangular box in this form. So this is the volume that we have obtained. Now, for you to be able to determine the value of x for which the volume of the box will be maximum, then we have to derive this. Then after doing the derivative, uh, then you're going to equate it to zero there. You're going to equate it to zero so that you can be able to solve the value of x. And then what is going to happen, you can now transpose this negative four x squared to the left-hand side. And therefore we're going to divide a good side with four and then 40 divided by 40, it will give you 10. Now, because we are in need of x, then we just put this square root side, then this is going to be heavy, plus or minus. And therefore the answer is going to be uh, what? Uh, square root of 10. The positive value will give us the maximum value. You remember this one is a cubic and then coefficient of x cubed if it's negative. You can see in this case it's negative 4 by 3. So this is going to be the shape of what? Of uh, 
of that cubic. Therefore, if you draw a Cartesian plane like this, this it gives us minimum, this gives us uh, maximum. And then surely this one is a negative square root of 10, positive square root of 10. And you can tell that uh, the negative square root of 10 is the one that comes first. So it's going to be this one here. And then here is going to have a positive square root of 10. And then, then that's the number that we are looking because the question is very clear uh, to say which value the volume of the box will be maximum. So we are looking for this one. So hence we have used 10 and say x equals to square root of 10. I mean, the square root of 10 is the solution for this one. And oil manufacturing company manufactures cylindrical shape, plastic containers. Each container must hold 275 milliliter of oil. Write each the height of the container in terms of R. Uh, now you can see that uh, we are having 275 millimeter there, and then you have to convert it to volume. So we know that one centimeter, uh, one cubic centimeter equals to one milliliter. So if we are having 275, then it's going to give us 275 cubic centimeter. So this is the uh, value that we are going to be working with. And then now, since we are having a volume, then to answer the first, first question, you then write the volume of a cylinder or cylindrical shape, then you're just going to substitute the values, then you make each the subject of the formula, and then so what you are having. The second question shows that the surface area is this, is the surface area of the container. This is the surface area of the container. And then let's see, you write the formula, and then from there you substitute the values that you are having. But remember H, uh, we then going to substitute this 275 over pi r squared is what we did. And from there you multiply, simplify it. And then of course we're going to be getting that. This is 550 over r uh, plus two pi r squared. So this is what, this is the surface area we are looking for. Determine the determine the radius of the container for which the, the minimum amount of plastic can be used. You write that that you obtain in the surface area, and then from there you apply the rules of differentiation, and you just derive, derive this one, and then you write this one with the ex positive exponent, hence we are having exponent two there. Then now to get you are solving for the value of r. So you, you are going to be multiply each term with the denominator of this fraction, which is r squared. Then this one you're going to be obtaining, and then you're going to transpose this one uh, to the, to the uh, left and right side. And therefore, because we are looking for r, then you're going to be dividing with 4 pi. Let's do that. And this is what we did. We divide with 4, four pi, and then because we are in need of R, then we had to get rid of this exponent the three by putting the cube root both sides. And then our answer is going to be four centimeter. That is the radius of this uh, cylindrical shape. Now let's have this one again. So I don't know if you have realized something, my dear learners, that we always use what we are even from the scenario. If the volume is given, you start with the volume. If the surface area is given, then we we'll surely will be starting with the surface area. The same applies with the perimeter. So if we will have that question, then I will try to explain as well. So that at least if you come across such question, you know uh, how to start. If the tree, a tree class is shaped of a cylinder, must hold 200 milliliter of liquid when full. 
show that the height of the class H can be expressed as this one. Now let's see, now remember we are given 200 milliliters, then we have to convert this into volume. Then we know that one cubic centimeter equals to one milliliter. Therefore, uh, the volume is 200 uh, cubic centimeter. Then you write the formula, you substitute the values, then you make H the subject of the formula there. That's going to give us 200, uh, 200 over pi r squared. And then from there, you have number two, show that the total surface area of a class can be expressed as this one. You just write the formula for surface area. Now, the other challenge that I think learners my experience is writing the correct formula for this shape. So make sure that you do um, practice and then just study the volume of each shape because they are not there in the formula sheet during the exam. So make sure that you remember all the, the formula for, for this one. For instance, uh, for cylinder, you must know the volume and the surface area. A sphere, you must also do the same. Uh, uh, what The rectangular box, you must know the volume, the surface area, and other. Uh, other shape that we are having, all right? So it's going to help you a lot. Just knowing the formula, then you are going to be able to answer everything. And then now let us show that we can get that surface area. Then you just substitute the values that we are having, then H, then we substitute with 200 over pi r squared. Then from there you simplify, and it, yes, it gives us the surface area as pi r squared plus 400 over r. All right, we're still having the same scenario, but now remember we did not answer the last question. So now let us try to answer the last question, which says has determined the volume, the value of R for which the total surface area of the class is minimum. Now you write uh, that, that you, okay. You then you drive with respect to R, then you just do the derivative. But now before you can do the derivative, you have to get rid of this uh, uh, fraction or division so that it can be written as this 400 r to the power negative one. And then you, you just apply the rules of differentiation. This is what you're going to be having equated to zero. But now since we are solving for r, but now we're having a fraction. Now to get rid of this fraction, you multiply each term uh, by the denominator of this fraction, which is r squared. So this is what you're going to be having after doing that. Inside. Then you're going to have to, so that you can be left with r and r equals to what? r equals to four centimeter. That is the radius that we are looking for. All right, uh, a side of a base of a rectangular cardboard shoe box are three X and two X centimeter respectively. The height is H there. The box is open on top without the lid at this stage. If the total surface area is given 200 centimeters squared, prove this. Now we can see we are given a surface area. You start with the surface area of the box, this is the surface area. But now you remember the surface area formula, normally you have two there, two there, two there. But now this one, it does not have two. Why? It's because the top part is not there because it's very clear from the scenario, the box is open. So there's nothing on top there. Hence, we did not 
you put these two there and then you can just substitute the values and then from there you get what we are having you make the y the subject the formula there we transposing this one this side and then from there you divide with 10x then this is what you're going to be having and then from there you say 200 over 10x then it's going to give you 20 over x and 6x cubed over 10 is going to over 10x is going to give us 3x over 5 this is what we have proved and then express the express the volume of the box in terms of x in terms of x let's write the volume then from there you substitute the values but now remember for h we are now going to be substituting with this one because remember y represent the height all right y represent the height so in a place of height you just substitute 20 over x minus 3x over 5 this is what we want to then from there you multiply the brackets and then that's going to be the volume which is 120 x minus 18 over 5 x She can run with uh, using an existing wall one side he has 16 meters of the wire fence if the length of the chicken run is y meters write an expression for the area you can see from the scenario given the length of the fence now the length we are going to relate it to the perimeter because remember the perimeter is the length total length of the outside uh, the outside part this one plus this one this part it's going to be 16. So in this one, it's very clear that we are having the perimeter. Now, how are we going to work with this? We start with the perimeter before we can now, or if in order to answer the first question, you start with the perimeter first. And then the perimeter, you let x, let a width be x. You can see in this case, it's, it's shown. This is the width, this is the width, it's x, and this is the length. And then we are having perimeter equals to length type, length plus two width then y for length is not two is because remember this side uh, is already existing it's a wall so there is no need to fence that side so we'll be having only one length there which is this part and then you just write substitute with the values p the perimeter is 16 and then L, which is Y, and then this 2X. Then you make Y the subject of the formula. Then this is what we're going to be obtaining, which is Y equals to 16 minus 2X. So that is the first one. But now the question is write the expression of the area. You write the area length times width. And then which is going to be this one. And then you substitute. And from there, you this is what you're going to be having. So you can also just multiply the bracket here. X times six is 16X. And then X times minus two X is minus two X squared. Then you stop there. The second question, find the dimension of the chicken run that will give the maximum value, uh, the maximum area actually, the maximum area. Then this is what you obtained from uh, solution one. And then you're going to be deriving with respect to x then then you write a prime of x equals to this so this is 60 minus 2x minus 4 i mean minus 4x then you put it to zero then you're going to solve for x it's very simple this one you just transpose then you divide with four then the value of x equals to four meter meaning four meter uh, plus four meter is eight meter remember this one the length it was this one 60 minus you just put 4 60 minus 8 it's going to give us 8 so when you add all these sides they are going to be equals to 60 meters
Now we are now under the rate of change. Let's look in under the rate of change. And then it says whenever you are dealing with the problem where one variable is changing with respect to another, you have to, to use the, the differentiation. So let's see on how do we do that. Uh, we have example one, say during an experiment, a learner must record the velocity of an electronic toy car over a distance of meter. T is the second after the experiment has been done. The velocity of the electronic toy car is given by this equation here, All right? The first question, determine the initial initial of the car, the velocity, the initial velocity of the car. So if the car uh, did not start, the initial is the starting. So the time is zero, the t is zero because we have it started. Then hence we are going to be substituting with zero where you see t is zero. The answer is going to give us s 80 uh, meters. The velocity of the toy car when t is equals to zero comma two two centimeters. No, no, no. The velocity of the car, toy car, when t equal to zero comma two seconds. All right. Then where you see t you just go to be substituted with zero comma two, and then this is what you are having. Thereafter, you then press your calculator. You will have eight comma seven six meters per second. So that is the velocity that we are having. The last one is say the, the rate at which the velocity changes. Remember, we have spoken about the change. If the variable is changing with respect to another, then you want to do the derivative. Therefore, we are going to be deriving uh, this first, the given equation, uh, before we can substitute with the time that we are having here, which is 1,2. This is what we are having. From there, you're going to derive this. After doing the derivative, we then substitute um, your time, which is one comma two, where you see t, and then from there you press your calculator, you obtain one comma six meters per second. So that's what we are having there. That is the rate of change. All right. Now let's go to integration. We are done with the application of differential calculus. But now oh, this is this are not only questions that you should focus on. There are so many questions under application of uh, calculus. You just need to make sure you revise more of these questions so that at least you can have an idea what is really happening under application of calculus. And then the integration. Uh, after completing this integration, you must be able to apply the standard form of integral as a converse of differentiation. Apply the rules for the integration for the function. And then last point, apply the integration to determine the magnitude of an area included by a kf and x axis. But this one, this one, the last point that we're not going to be focusing on, I think uh, we have how to determine the magnitude of the area when you are having an irregular. That are great. Uh, now the first question, uh, determine the following integral. So we will be integrating this one and also this one. Now let's see the solution on how do we integrate the two question. Now the first one, you start this one and then you apply the rules of differentiation, not the differentiation per se, but the integral, the integral. So remember the integral rule says, you're going to add with one and divide with that that you have. So it's going to be three divided.
divide by 3 plus negative pi x plus c. Don't forget to write this c, the same terms reward a mark for that, just to write c. And then you can also simplify this one, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So the answer can also be x cubed minus pi x plus uh, grade with respect to t. So sometimes you'll find learners you will write 3x because they are used to this thing of x. And uh, then every time when you integrate, just look what are you integrating with respect to. And then this one is you can see the x, then you, the answer should have x there. Then so you are having x. And this one is say the t. So the answer is going to have t as you, as, as you can see on the screen there. So that's how you should go about it. And then Again, please don't forget this to write this C. Don't write, write C. Okay. And then this is going to be the last for this lesson. Thank you very much. I hope everything that we have discussed uh, on this lesson is going to help you to achieve uh, good results under technical mathematics. And then let me just leave you with these words, my dear learners that say, believe in yourself and all that you are. Know there is something inside.